Hey guys, welcome to Dozer Rescue. I'm Dozer, and today we're going to be talking about the top five most asked questions on Google regarding personal medic bags and just medic bags in general. Now, each of these questions was searched up at least 10,000 times, and depending on where you go on Google, you may or may not get a good answer. So today we're going to cover these top five questions and hopefully give you guys some good answers so you can set up your personal medic bags as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The number one question on Google asked is what is packed in a medic bag? Now what's packed in a medic bag is going to depend on a couple different things. Number one, your scope of practice, how well you know your equipment um, and what you're allowed to do. Number two, where do you plan on using this backpack or carrying it with you? Are you going to be going on a lot of uh, like hiking adventures outdoors and wilderness? Or is this for something for your car? Or do you want this to be, you just carry it around with you and it's, it's wherever you go. Um, and then lastly, it's going to depend on cost. How much are you willing to spend for your medic bag? Some people are willing to spend up to five, six, $700 on a medic bag. And other people are willing to spend $20, but they expect everything to be there. So it's, it's going to depend on what you're willing to put into it. Um, but essentially what is packed in a medic bag is just going to be life-saving equipment that is easily accessible and hopefully anyone can use. Um, so these are going to be things such as tourniquets, uh, BVM, uh, the barriers, your, your mask barriers, um, tape, quick clot, gauze, bandages, latex gloves, alcohol prep pads. Um, you may have a splint in there. You may have a sling in there. Those are all things that are gonna be common in a medical bag. Um, you can also throw in vital things equipment, vital equipment too. So stethoscopes, blood pressure cuffs, uh, pulse oximeters, temperature probes. Those are all things that you may or may not have in your medical bag and that's just gonna depend on you. But we're gonna talk about that in more in, kind of help you figure out what you should have in your bag. Moving on here to question number two, um, where do you get a medic bag backpack and supplies? Um, so the short, easy answer, go to Amazon. You can go on Amazon and find almost anything. And I've looked on there extensively and you can find a lot of really good medical backpacks on there, pre-made with all the equipment, all the, everything you need, ready to go for, I mean, a, a pretty good price. I've seen them about $60, $70, and they're pretty comprehensive. Um, they come with almost everything you could possibly need and more on a very basic level, but they're there. And whether you have medical experience or not, it's a lot better to have a bag that's got a sizable amount of equipment in there for you to choose from. The problem is making sure you know where everything is at, because when something happens where you need to use it, it's gonna be at a very inconvenient time and you're probably gonna be highly stressed. So knowing where all of your equipment is in your medical bag is super vital as well. But Amazon makes some great medical bags. Um, you can get them from all kinds of companies, North American Rescue, Live the Creed, I think it's Black Angel Medical or Black Guardian Angel Medical, something like that. Um, there's all kinds of different websites I follow and on my Instagram pages, but if you just Google medic bags, you can find a ton. And if you're interested in the content that I provide, I can also make you a bag too. So coming in at number three, we have, what is the difference between a medical bag and a first aid kit? Now this may sound like one of the same, but there actually is a difference for those of you that don't know. For a first aid kit, that's gonna be those little white uh, boxes that you see put in doctor's offices or just kind of put out in general, usually hanging out next to the AEDs in buildings. A first aid kit is just gonna be very, very basic, very elementary. Most often, it's just gonna be Band-Aids. Uh, you may have like a, a splint, uh, not a splint, but you may have like a sling, for example, um, but that's really gonna be about it. And a lot of the first aid kits that I've opened up and seen, there's really nothing to them. It's, it's just Band-Aids, some alcohol prep pads, maybe some gloves, maybe a couple pieces of gauze, uh, maybe a pressure bandage or something like that, and that's about it. Um, so first aid kit is just very elementary, very easy, usually not meant for a whole lot. It's just to give you something to work with. Whereas a medic bag, depending on what you pack on it and again, your comfortability, how comfortable you are with your bag, um, you can have a whole lot more. So don't think that they're necessarily the same thing. If you were to say a first aid kit versus a medical bag, there is a large difference. 
Just to recap, medical bags are usually gonna have a lot more equipment and they're gonna be prepared to handle a lot more patients and or traumas. Whereas a first aid kit is pretty much just gonna be really, really basic cuts and bruises and scrapes and things like that. You're not gonna find a C collar uh, which you put around someone's neck if they have a potential spinal injury. You're not going to find anything like that in a first aid kit. It's going to just purely be band-aids, gauze, real quick, easy things like that. You may or may not even find a tourniquet in a first aid kit. Whereas if you have a medical bag, you're probably going to find a lot more um, useful equipment in that for, again, either more patients or more serious injuries. Going on to question number four here, how should you pack a medic bag? Now, there's really no right or wrong way to pack a medic bag. Um, it's gonna depend on personal preference. However, what I do recommend is customizing it and tailoring it so that you can get your most needed items quickly and accessibly, um, and then kind of backtrack the things that you're not gonna use as much. Um, so let me give you an example here on my bag here. So I know I, I had spoke about it, but this is gonna be my trauma one. This is kind of just really easy, basic stuff over-the-counter meds, my secondary trauma bag, uh, my vitals bag, and then there's another side pocket under here. This is gonna be more for my admin pouch. So this is gonna be for like my pens, Sharpies, notebooks. I have a Leatherman tool in there. Um, I have a sewing kit, some lighters, things of that nature. Um, but basically I have this set up here for myself. Um, the trauma bag on the outside, this is the easiest to get to, the quickest, and I can also rip this off from the whole backpack itself if I need to take this with me, if I don't want to carry around the whole backpack. Um, so I have this on the outside. Then I have this, which is going to be my band-aids, my gloves, like very easy, essentially just a fir first aid kit is what this is. Uh, and this one is sitting on the outside because these two are going to be the most used um, for me in my situations. So if there's not a massive trauma or something super serious that just happened, then I'm probably gonna use this guy right here. Um, and then following that behind here, the next easiest pouch to get into is my over-the-counter meds, which is pretty common for at least me and my family. So if someone may be having an upset stomach, give them some Tums. Someone has a headache, give them some Tylenol, um, things like that. So those are right here, pretty easy to give. Then we have back here, my secondary trauma pouch, a little bit harder to get into. It's still, it's all very easy to get into, but just in terms of convenience and what's closest to me at the time with the bag in front of me. Trauma bag, my secondary trauma bag is back here. Again, that's if I have to splint somebody up, if I need more gauze, if I need uh, pressure bandages, you know, things like that, it's sitting back there. Um, see collars, things like that. Like, I'm not really gonna use that stuff, but in case I do have it. And then I have back here, um, this is gonna be my vitals bag. So that's gonna be, um, not really used a whole lot unless I have someone that I really need to take care of and I have to wait until EMS gets there. So that's why I put it all the way in the back, but it's also the biggest pocket. So I'm able to store all that equipment in there. So again, my stethoscope, my pulse socks, my temperature probe, my blood pressure cuff, all that stuff stays back here. Um, the least accessible for me, not the most used, the biggest bag, but that is why. And then you can also see here, I have uh, just surgical tape and I have a little CPR barrier face shield as well on the outside because tape is always incredibly useful and you use it all the time. So I always keep a roll on the outside so I can just get to it really quickly. And then I have uh, a CPR face shield. It's just like a, a little plastic barrier you just put to give you something between somebody else's mouth. Um, now I do have a pocket mask in here as well, but it just depends if I'm not able to get that or if something is so urgent, I, I lose sight of where everything is at. At least I got this little blue thing right here I can rip off and use that. Um, also here on the outside for quick and easy use, I have a pair of gloves. Uh, these gloves can be used if I'm dealing with rope or if I don't want to get my hands injured, you know, anything like that. I have a set of gloves just to protect my hands. And then on the other side here, very quickly, I have a tourniquet. Tourniquets are extremely important to have. Uh, for them to be effective, you do have to use them very quickly. So I have mine right here on the side, super easy to get if I'm wearing the backpack or if the backpack's in front of me, I can pull that out and throw on a tourniquet very, very quickly. Um, and then I also have a needle D right here on the outside. Are you really gonna be needle D'ing somebody out and about if you're not working? Probably not. Um, 
but I just have it there just in case. It's a reminder to, for me personally, I see that and I go, okay, if things really hit the fan here and there's no EMS nearby and I'm on my own in the wilderness with my family or on a hike or with some friends, at least I can do something about it. And it's just a mental note. Um, but that's kind of how I set up my bag. And I would recommend when you set up your bag, do a similar thought process, do something for you that's gonna make sense. It may not be the way I have it set up. You may wanna have all your vital equipment right here in the front because you may feel like checking someone's vitals is more important than, uh, I don't know, pulling out band-aids. Or it's, it may be something that you use more. Like I said, there's really no right or wrong answer. Um, but I would recommend to pack your medical bag in a sense that makes sense to you, that's organized and put what you're gonna use the most often on the outside and then kind of work your way back inwards uh, what's gonna be least used. So when it comes to question number five here, who makes the best medic bags? Um, for this video, I'm gonna give you three answers. So the first answer is going to be uh, Live the Creed. They're a company that I've been purchasing from uh, for the past couple of years. They put out pretty consistently good products. Um, I know I experienced a couple times, um, they were using the combat gauze that was given in all of their medical kits and their IFACs. And then they ran out of that and started using quick clot, which works. Um, so they may not have the exact brand you're looking for, but they always replace it with something similar. So Live the Creed has always been pretty good. Um, another one that is really good is North American Rescue. You can't go wrong. North American's a huge company and they're very actively involved in trauma and emergency medicine. So any kits that they make or any advice that they have is usually top notch. So if you're looking for medical bags from a really reputable company that's huge, uh, North American's your best bet. And then my third answer, this is gonna be, in my opinion, the best answer, is gonna be yourself. If you create your own medical bag, you know what's going into it, you have to learn how it works, and you can organize it and tailor it to wherever you want. Um, so I'm very happy and I'm very impressed with this personal medical bag. I've used it plenty of times in real world applications for not only my family, but for friends and just random strangers out and about. And it's perfect because it's exactly what I need. And that's what I recommend for you. The best option is for who makes a, a good medic bag or the best medic bag is gonna be yourself. You make your own medic bag. You get to choose the backpack, or the container or how you're gonna carry it. You choose the equipment, you choose the companies it comes from, you choose how you organize it. There's no better person than yourself. So that's my answer to you. All right, so that's it for the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I gave you some solid answers. And if you have any other questions or any concerns or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, stay prepared, and stay tactical. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.